Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials. Today is lesson number three in the intermediate program. We will be going over for each loops. Um, they're actually easier than they look and sound. Uh, it's a bit of a long tutorial. Uh, we're, we're going to be recovering a lot of old content. This is going to be a class that, and this is going to be an episode that builds on a lot of old stuff and adds just a little bit of new stuff to it. So without further ado, let's get moving. As you can see in my main class, the for each loops class, I have imported ArrayList and Scanner from the java.util library. Um, also, I have started our three methods that we're going to be using today. Um, the main method, public static employee, add employee, and public static void, find employee, and that accepts one argument, which would be ArrayList of type employees a. As you can see here, we have an array list of type employees called and type employee called employees. We also have a, a standard scanner, int decision, boolean terminate, which is set to false. Again, in each of these methods, they have their own scanner. Um, in add employee, it has an instance of the class employee, and inside the find employee, we have int decision and a temporary name storage string and a temporary salad storage, salary storage float if I could talk today. So if you need to have more time to copy this down go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna go ahead and move along to the employee class. We have um, three private variables and two private strings one for first and last name and another one for a, uh, a private float for salary. These are going to be the three defining variables that every employee will have when it's created. They will have a first name, a last name, and a salary value. This here is a constructor method. Um, usually they're not included in my tutorials because if you don't include one, the compiler will automatically create one when it's building the solution. Uh, basically what a constructor method does is it prepares everything, it sets everything up and initializes all the variables so they have at least some form of value when they're getting ready to run. So, And you'll see that we have a set method for all three of the different variable types, first name, last name, and salary. And then we have get methods for all three of the variable types, first name, last name, and salary. So again, if you need more time to copy this down, go ahead and pause the video now. Um, I would take the time to sit here and type out all of this, but if I do, the tutorial is going to end up being somewhere around 40 minutes, and that's just a little too long for me. So let's go ahead and move along to the main method. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do a while statement, or a while loop. We're going to go while terminate oopsies look at all this extra space I have while terminate is equal to false we're going to continue to execute the uh, the rest of the the, uh, the main method it will literally be the last thing inside the method so don't worry about having extra space below it system dot out dot print line parentheses quotes Go ahead and copy this sucker down right now, just the way that it is, because we are going to be using a lot of them. So, please choose one of the following options, and then let's clarify, enter the corresponding number for the operation or anything else to end the program. and then paste this sucker oopsies and we're going to do add employee as option one and option two will be find employee as you can see we have two different classes or two different methods in here one is add employee gee I wonder where that's gonna go and then the other one is find employee again gee I wonder where that's gonna go okay so now that we've got that finished, we need to detect their decision. So, decision equals input dot next int, 
And then from there, we're going to create an if statement. If decision is equal to one. Remember, a double equal sign is an assignment operator, and a single equal sign. Actually, no, I've got that mixed up. A double equal sign is comparison, and a single equal sign is an assignment operator. So that is the difference. That is why we have to use double equals whenever we're doing things such as while loops. Uh, we are making sure that terminate, is, terminate, terminate actually has a value of false rather than making it false. And we're making sure that decision actually has a value of 1 rather than making it 1. So employees dot add add employee so basically what we're doing here is we are calling upon this array list because remember array lists are empty classes meaning they do not have a variable type until you assign them which is why we have to assign it a specific variable type of employee anyways we're calling on the class array list the instance of the class rather uh, we call it employees so we're calling on the method inside employees called add which creates a new slot for a new value and then we're adding whatever the return value of add employees is into that new slot that it just created so else if decision is equal to two we're going to find employees or rather find employee and we're going to forward it the employees array list and then else since we said they could enter anything else to terminate the program we're just going to go ahead and set terminate is equal to true so again double equals is a comparison operator single equals is an assignment operator so I know I've said that a million times but it's good to know and it's good to have burned into your memory because it will help later down the line. Moving on to the add employee method, we have significant amount of system.out.println lines. So let's just get that rolling here. We're going to do please enter the user's first name, period, quotes, and that. <laughs> We're going to go instance dot set first name input dot next okay and we're gonna go ahead and copy all of this save us some time um again remember the reason why we call instance is because the Im add employee method has a instance of the employee class called instance so we're actually just calling upon that it saves some time and no, no other methods can see that except for the employee or add employee method, so it's perfectly safe. We don't have to worry about any overlap. It's a beautiful thing. Last name, and then we need to do set salary, and that is going to be a next float. Okay, and that will adjourn the add employee class. As you can see, it's pretty simplistic. We're just um, creating a new instance of the employee class. We're filling out all of those three variables I was talking about, and then we're returning that instance of the class and pumping it straight into the array list so that other people can see it, and it's been categorically organized. Um, the reason why we do it this way, the reason why we create a, a method specifically just for filling out new employees, is because when you jump in to this method it has to create this scanner and it has to create this employee instance and then it runs through all this pumps out whatever the instance value is and then once it exits this method these two things no longer exist until you go back into the method so it kind of helps when you're not having to create and micromanage a million different employee um, titles essentially in different instance titles so moving along on that one if you have any questions about that please post them in the comment section below I will be happy to help you um, we do have more system dot out dot print lines to go quite a few more so let's go please select the method of finding the employee enter the corresponding number
And then we're going to do one is going to be first name. Two is going to be last name. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure many of you have guessed three is going to be salary. And then decision equals input dot next int. Okay, then we're going to start an if statement. If decision, oopsies, decision is equal to one, we're going to system, actually, no, I have it pasted, uh, system dot out print line, please enter the employee's first name. Those don't need to be capitalized. Capitalize only the first letter. And we can actually clarify on this um, in order to prevent any confusion about what's going on. We can just slap that here as well as here so that people know exactly what's going on with that and there isn't any conflict. So we're going to assign temp name storage to whatever the user inputs. And then we're going to start our for each loop, which is exactly the content we've been going for. I will take a moment to explain this after I finish writing the uh, the lines of code. So we're going to go if e dot get first name dot contains. Oops, no caps. And for those of you who are getting and see about it. I don't have that much more to go, I promise. Oopsies. Actually, we don't need quotes. We need e.get first name. So basically what I'm doing is I'm form what I'm doing is I'm formatting the final message that will output the um, employee's information. So I'm just calling out the individual methods, the individual get methods from the instances that are in question. It will automatically detect which ones we need and I will show you how and why. Okay, so that is the end of that if statement. This is the whole thing right here. We're going, just going to copy this once I'm done explaining the for each loop. But the way you read this is for each employee in array or array list of A. So as you can tell, we have an array list of type employee. It is searching through every employee value inside that array list. We've got the, the, the title is E. That's pretty much a counter. And it's going to go through every every slot inside the array list A. It's going to look for, in this specific instance, you're going to type in the first name. It is going to look to see if the employee in question's first name value contains whatever is in temp name storage. So if we have John Doe and we search for John, it will pull up John Doe. If we search the last name for Doe and we have John and Jane Doe, it will pull up John and Jane Doe because they both have the last name of Doe. And I'm actually going to show this to you because we are going to finish this up here real quick. We are almost done with the program. So if decision, or let's just toss in some else's, else if decision, else if decision is equals to three, whoopsies. Not 31, not 33, just 3. Okay, so decision 2 would be last name, so we are going to continue just to keep the same format with temp name storage. We just need to change the prompt to last, and we need to change the e.get to last name. And that's all we have to do. This one's a little bit different. We need to change this to next float, and changed from temp name storage to temp salary storage changes to employees salary 
and then instead of the e dot get first name dot contains that's all string matters so e dot get salary is a new thing we need and we're just going to set that equals to temp salary storage that is a comparison as long as that holds true it will output this so last thing I need to do is I just need to throw in an else statement else system.out.println that is an invalid selection period close quotes boom let's compile it it says compilation complete so we have written an entire program with zero errors so that's a good deal let's push F2 as you can see in the output screen we have the pro proper um, display so let's go ahead and add some employees John Doe, 795. Add another employee, Jane Doe. Let's put her at 1222. And one last one. Let's call him Rickard Frost. And let's give him Tim 86. Okay. So now we're just going to go through all three of our find functions. Let's start with first name. We can do John. As you can see, it will output John Doe with his salary. Let's do it one more time. Whoopsies. Well, I guess we're doing Robert Fish. All right. 428. Robert Fish is a newcomer. He sucks at his job. I'm going to do last name Doe. As you see, it will pull up everything with the last name of Doe. So we have John and Jane. And it shows both of their salaries. And last but not least, let's do salary. And do... Let's pull up Robert Fish, since we accidentally created him. 428. This is why you wear protection, children. So, as you see, we looked up his exact salary, $4.28, and it pulled him up, Robert Fish, $4.28. So that is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will see you next week with a new tutorial. We are going to start working on Windows Forms in the Java programming language. Thank you. Have a great day.